news, Air Force destroys ISWAP headquarters in fresh airstrike. INEC police vow better security in upcoming rerun elections. Over 1.5 million acres of land destroyed in Australia mega fire. Many thanks for joining us on News Now on TV360 Nigeria. I am Aneta Felix. The Air Tax Force of Operation Lafayette has destroyed a portion of the Islamic State of West Africa Province Iswap tactical headquarters in fresh airstrikes at Kolaram in Borno State. The strikes conducted as part of the ongoing Operation Rattlesnake 2 also neutralized some fighters of the terrorist sect. In a statement, Air Force spokesperson Air Commodore Ibikuni Daramala said intelligence and surveillance and reconnaissance missions revealed that the building was being used by the insurgents. Daramala added that after confirming the report, the Air Tax Force attacked the identified hideouts, destroying the structures and killing several terrorists. Meanwhile, President Muhammad Buhari says he is shocked and grieved by the attack which took place in Plateau State on Thursday, January 9th. Unknown bandits had stormed Kunen village in Mangu local government area of the state, killing no fewer than 12 people and injuring scores of others. Reacting in a statement by his special advisor on media and publicity, Daba Shehu, President Muhammad Buhari strongly condemned the attack and condoled the people of the state. Shehu said President Buhari is in contact with Governor Simon along the military, police and other security agencies in the state to ascertain details of what happened and what can be done to foster future occurrence. The president also urged security agencies in the state to increase vigilance to stop further attacks on innocent communities. The federal government has advised Bishop Matthew Kuka against using his position to criticize the Muhammad Buhari-led administration. In a statement issued on Friday, Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, charged the clergy to instead work for religious harmony in Nigeria. Mohammed was reacting to a statement credited to Bishop Kuka, in which he compared the federal government with Boko Haram terrorist sect. The minister noted that Kuka's comment is not only deceitful, but also a great disservice to the men and women in uniform who are daily battling the Boko Haram and Usopp terrorists to keep all Nigerians safe. The minister reiterated the federal government's position that the Boko Haram and Usopp terrorists do not subscribe to any religion, irrespective of their pretense to such, but are driven by their primitive propensity to kill mindlessly and destroy without restraint. Chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Mahmoud Yakubu, has charged security agencies to improve security presence in the forthcoming rerun and by elections holding on January 25, 2020. Yakubu said this during an expanded interagency consultative meeting with the committees on election security in Abuja. He stressed that at the 2019 elections, a lot of attention was given to numbers rather than setting priorities on strategic deployment. We must translate the new approach to reality in the forthcoming run elections such that Nigerians will see a qualitatively different security arrangement. No thugs and hoodlums can be more powerful than the Nigeria police and other security agencies. It is the failure to act decisively and collaboratively that encourages thuggery and serves as an incentive for bad behavior. Going forward, INEC has decided that although the Commission has no power under the law to cancel an election, it should not proceed with the process in any constituency where the safety of voters, our personnel and election materials is threatened. It is extremely important also for us to know that this time around Whatever gave rise to the problems we had during the last elections, we must be able to deal with. And what I want to say is that there must be consequences for bad behavior. Bad behavior not only in, in relation to thugs, criminals, outlaws, and people who just want to upset the entire system, but our own elements, our own agents, who either 
by design or default will want to scuttle this process must be brought to book. No tout can come out and commit any electoral offense on the election day without connivance from either security agents or the island officials or the politicians. But when we work together, everybody knows his responsibility. But when we work together, we can thwart and stop anybody that will want to disrupt election. Barely 24 hours after a court ruling that sentenced him to prison for contempt of court, Director General of the National Council for Arts and Culture, Olushegun Orushewe, says he's been victimized for shutting down Arts and Crafts Village. The NCAC boss discussed this while addressing John List in Abuja on Friday, insisted that his current court travails are linked to his refusal to relinquish the Arts and Crafts Village located in the central business district Abuja to interested persons. Onushawe added that the property was shut down because it was being used as a drug den and hideout for criminals. They have refused to entertain further questions on the court order, committing him to prison for contempt of court. Justice Jude Okeke of the Federal High Court in the Federal High Capital Territory of Abuja had th on Thursday sentenced Onushawe to prison for failing to comply with the court order. Former Senator who represented Kaduna Central in the 8th National Assembly, Shehu Sani, says he has he's been framed with the bribery allegation against him. In a statement released on Friday, Sani denied every offering bribe to Nigeria's Chief Justice, Danka Mohammed, adding that his arrest is politically motivated. He describes that the extortion charges against him uh, as baseless, factless, unfounded, hollow, and unsubstantial fabricated to stain and mute him. Sunny said he's made a statement and provided all facts against all claims. He also demanded that the EFCC publicly show all the sheets of statements and supporting documents for the world to see. Sunny was arrested by the EFCC over alleged extortion. EFCC had accused Sunny of collecting money from Sunny Dauda, owner of ASD Motors, promising to pass it on to Ibrahim Magum, acting chairman of the anti graft agency, to influence an investigation. The former lawmaker was also accused of promising to assist Dauda in influencing a case at the Supreme Court by bribing Mohamed Tanko, Chief Justice of Nigeria, and some other judges. The CJN has denied any deal with the former senator. Computer Professionals Registration Council in Nigeria has urged the federal government to put in place policies and laws that will promote the potentials of social media for the benefits of citizens in the country. The group gave the charge during a courtesy visit to President Muhammadu Buhari at the presidential villa in Abuja. In response, President Buhari admitted that ICT is very important for the development of the country, that his administration has put in place various laws to ensure its growth. The next level agenda, we believe, would require much more leveraging of IT to deliver employment for our teaming youths to diversify the economy, to fight uh, corruption, and of course to fight insecurity and, and ensure that we have a more secure environment in, in the nation. The future belongs to IT. What was unimaginable 20 years ago is a reality. Apple, Microsoft, have higher market capitalization than ExxonMobil or Shell or Barclays Bank. Accordingly, we have introduced numerous policies and have made substantial investments to ensure the benefits of this technology-driven age is felt by 200 million Nigerians. Indeed, our strategy for inclusive economic growth can only be achieved by leveraging the technology tools available to us. Already, we have seen the benefits of using technological tools for lending to farmers, as well as monitoring crop performance, especially in some of the more remote locations.
Officials of the National Identity Management Commission across the country on Thursday cashed in on the rush to obtain the national identification number to fees candidates, according to investigations. Many candidates uh, queued at registration centers on Wednesday and Thursday as the registration for the Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination would start on Monday. The Joint Admission and Matriculation Board had, on October 17, 2019, said only candidates with the NIN would be registered for the 2020 UTME. JAM spokesman Benjamin Fabian insisted that there was no going back on the board's policy to mean. He blamed examination practice syndicates for the problem being accepted by and candidates who wanted to obtain the number. Dagabana added that the IMC is collaborating with JAM to ensure the successful conduct of the examination. She disclosed that the register of Jam Ishak Oluyode went around the NIMC centers in Abuja on Tuesday and was satisfied with what he observed concerning the environment. We'll be right back. Do stay with us. Corruption not in my country. <laughs> that was a very good uh, business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the furniture you, you uh, brought was very perfect. <laughs> that's how we roll. <laughs> <laughs> because then, let me do you uh, receipts. Yeah. How much of it again? Uh, uh, one million naira. Okay, write 2.5. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. The deal was uh, for one million naira. Now. Okay, write 3 million. I'll give you 500. M oh, no. I just do business like, <laughs> like that now. Yeah. Hey, Dakis, give me back my check. Let me go and look for something that was business. Take. Oh, oh, oh. Your loss. Ah. Hey, man. It is only for incorruptible customers. What are you talking? Now get out. What, what, what kind of this? You, you just die. No, 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 no. You that die. Is the door. That, that is the door. Now yeah. get out from here. Rubbish. Look, my people. Make me only add money for original invoice price. That's not corruption. Say no. Not in my country. Corruption not in my country. In the last three years, we have built a multi-purpose center, which is the envy of all in our constituency. And I can tell you that the people who are living there are already enjoying it. Guy, do you think what this man just said is true? See, I seriously doubt. I'm sure it's one of those that silly lies. And hey, wait a do you know there's a way to find out if these things he's saying is true or not? Ah. This is the construct app. It gives people like us a sure way to track implementation of constituency projects. It gives valid and verified information on location of projects, amounts allocated, amounts funded, the level of job done, and even the profiles of concerned legislators. You and I can post directly on this app. Are you serious? This is the go-to app. If you want to know how our commonwealth is being expanded by the government. Wow. Let's even see if what this man said is true. Show me. The Construct app is developed by Other People Nigeria with support from USAID and is available on both Google Play Store and Apple Store. Eh, yeah, that is true. <laughs> of course, I told you. We apologize for that break in transmission. Moving on now. The National Universities Commission, NUC, has clarified that it did not abolish mass communication as a cost of study in Nigerian universities, but that the cost has been unbundled into seven other degree programs. NUC Director of Corporate Affairs, Ibrahim Yakasai, disclosed this on Friday in Abuja in reaction to some online reports claiming that the NUC had phased out mass communication. Yakasai urged universities wishing to offer the new programs to seek permission from the commission before running them as they had to first meet certain requirements. The Kasai further stated that the unbundling of mass communication was due to increasing demands from students. He said that it would provide more opportunities for students to learn about the media beyond mass communication. The new branches of the course include advertising, broadcasting, cinematography, development communication studies, information and media studies, film and multimedia study. In Nigeria, a young inventor has been making waves with his jaw-dropping inventions. From vacuum cleaners to microscopes, water fountains to spaceships, Timile Hidaomi has found a way to build a solution for problems around him. This next report tells us more. Others may see a pile of rubbish, but Timile Hidaomi sees a potential store for materials for his next science project. It's a literal case of one man's trash being another's treasure. 
It was from a dump site like this that Timile he sourced materials to build a vacuum cleaner to help with house chores. Anytime my mom asked me to go and sweep, I, I didn't like sweeping. So I had to create something that is going to be even more easier for me to, to just take and start it and start sweeping. Even I am I'm thinking of making this as a robot that can, if I just switch it on and just start sweeping itself. Simi has also channeled his inner Einstein to build a digital microscope, an invention he created to prove to his sister that ants have six legs. The light there is to make more light to the, to the bees here, for it to be visible to the, to the lens over here. The lens from the camera, this one from its DVD room, and each, this one is for it to be movable around the base here. Timmy has also designed an electronically controlled water fountain made of calabash balls, batteries to pump the water, and even flowers for aesthetics. He's designed a prototype of a spacecraft, a mini power bike, a power bank, among others. His father says there are more inventions in the pipeline that are sadly been stalled by lack of funds and electricity. The project is just the first indigenous aircraft built in, in, in the whole of Africa, which he, he's trying to build. That is, is going to source all the material locally, everything 100% Nigeria. And the, 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 the aircraft will, be, will carry human being, not just a toy. To date, we are being hampered by fund. Otherwise, uh, we will have rolled out that project. Again, we are also being hampered by electricity because many times we need, we need electricity to work. Despite challenges accessing power, funds and the internet, Timmy's imagination continues to drive him to create possibilities from scrap. And at just 18, his scientific exploits have won him $3,000 at a science contest, awards for outstanding inventions and a scholarship. Aneta Felix, TV360, Nigeria. Just you watching news now on TV360 Nigeria. We'll be right back with more stories. On Deji 360, we don't just ask the questions. What is wrong with amending the constitution the way uh, the, the National Assembly members have been doing it? We seek answers. The constitution is constituent. Our problem is not um, lack of laws. Our problem is lack of the willpower to implement our laws. Answers that provide clarity. While we negotiate, we should try to make it a point that the girls must be complete. The clarity you need to make informed judgment so that you can make the right decision and take action. People are saying it is you politicians that are responsible for this, that you are the reason why oh, this is happening. All these dollars that call themselves governors in this country? I wish we had people like Tony at the National Assembly. God forbid that I go to join that team. Uh, well, DG 360, providing clarity to issues. Welcome to the business side of the news. President Muhammad Buhari has appointed Abubakar Garba as the new Registrar General of the Corporate Affairs Commission, CAC. A former Minister of State for Defense, Ademola Seriki, was also appointed as Chairman of the Board of the Commission. The appointment was announced in a statement released on Friday. Presenting the appointment letter to the new Registrar General, Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Adini Adibayo, that the constitution of the new board has put to rest the lingering leadership puzzle in the commission. The appointment of the new Registrar General is coming almost two weeks uh, after the former Registrar General, Azuka Azinge, was directed to step aside after she was accused of false declaration of assets. The Petroleum and Natural Gas Senior Staff Association of Nigeria, Pengerson, have called on the federal government to resuscitate the refineries in the country to enable job creation, reduce the burden of importing refined petroleum products, 
and add value to the nation's economy. President of the Association, Ndukaku Oheri, made this call while addressing journalists at a press conference held in Lagos. Oheri says the group will continue to advocate the application of the NLNG ownership and operating model for the refineries in order to maximize the national assets. The group has also urged the federal government to reconsider the passage of the Petroleum Industry Governance Bill as this will allow the removal of barriers and corruption to enable productivity. Ohari, however, called for the inclusion of a clause that mandates international oil companies to refine certain percentage of their crude production in the Brent crude prices steadied on Friday, pairing earlier losses as Middle East tensions erupted again after the United States added new sanctions on Iran in retaliation for its missile attack on U.S. forces in Iraq this week. Brent crude was up 11 cents at $65.48 a barrel, while West Texas intermediate crude slipped 17 cents to $59.39 a barrel. The U.S. imposed more sanctions on Iran on Friday, targeting Iran's manufacturing and mining, as well as textile sectors, as, as, uh, senior, as well as senior Iranian officials who Washington said were involved in the January 8 attack on military bases housing U.S. troops. However, prices were heading for their first weekly decline since late November, with Brent on track for a 4.5% loss and WTI set for a 5.8% decline. We'll now review activities on the stock market. Well, just by the whiskers, the NSC escaped closing the week negative as bargain hunters sold off major high and medium cap equities to lock in gains made in the past one week. Now, due to this, the market breadth closed negative with 25 losers and 11 gainers, but with some big weight equities closing the day on chain like MTN and major medium cap stocks posting gains. The market managed to close positive, pushing the all share index up by 0.07%. Now, with all of this, it is not surprising that uh, market activity is falling, and that's actually when compared to what we saw on Thursday. Well, let's now move uh, to the equities that actually um, bought this gain. That's the top gainers today. We can see that Okumu Oil is leading the pack, appreciating by six naira. BUA Cement sits second on the chart, and this is coming less than 48 hours after it listed on the NSC. Uh, also on the gainers chart, we have Cap PLC right here, and UAC, and sitting on the fourth position. And to the losers chart, we have Dangote Cement. Ironically, the equities that led the gainers chart yesterday are actually leading the losers chart today. And I'm talking about Dangote Cement right here, falling by about three naira. And Guarantee Trust Bank also led the gainers chart yesterday. I think it took second spot, but it's now on the second spot of the losers chart. It's also falling. And um, it was also a bad day for Afri Prude Investment and Presco sitting third and fourth on the losers chart. And market summary, we can see that about 280 million shares valued at 4.8 billion naira were transacted in 5,189 deals. Well, let's now go outside Nigeria and see what it looks like in foreign scene. FTSE, Dow and Nikkei are uh, actually, FTSE and Nikkei are actually uh, falling. Forget what this is saying. But uh, Nikkei is actually posting gains. The FTSE and Dow fell today. Nikkei posted gains, reversing uh, the downward trend it's been witnessing in the past uh, days of trading. Well, that's it from the world of business. It's back to the Give him his shoe somewhere here. His phone and uh, everything. Don't do like that to Thank you. Bye-bye. So, <laughs> Hey, Why do you, Where do you think you are going? Who? Oh. You never shake body. Eh? Hey. You never shake body. Shake wait, body, wait. see? Huh? You never shake body. Ah. 
Eh? I don't get combo for my body. You go take for here. Sit down, sit down. Come on, man. What's this man still doing here? They say I have to shake body. Eh, I shake body, I shake body. They say I do this. And I say I don't get combo. You are asking for money. Sorry, ma'am. Asking for money to bail a suspect is an act of corruption. Both of you will be punished. Corruption is not allowed within the force. Remember, police is your friend. Giving and taking bribe is wrong. Corruption, not in my country. Stop corruption now. Corruption not in my country. Thousands of climate protesters have flooded the streets of Australian state capitals as fire authorities warned of another dangerous night ahead in four states. Firefighters in New South Wales, Victoria, South Australia and Western Australia continue to battle fires with gusty winds expected to create hazardous firefighting conditions late into the night. A spillover had been feared for days after two fires at Dunes Road and East Oni Creek merged on Friday, pulling another massive fire merger nearby earlier in the week. Across many parts of the country, deadly forest fires that have raged for weeks are threatening to advance again as soon as temperatures soar. And turning now to sports, the Confederation of African Football, CAF, has released just a document that reveals how the voting for the CAF Awards 2019 happened. The CAF Awards for 2019 was held on Tuesday, January 7th, 2020, with Senegalese superstar Sadio Mane and Nigerian player Assis Atochoala winning the biggest awards for the night. But the document revealed that the Nigeria's uh, uh, Barcelona forward, Shala, did not get the support of her compatriot, who made up the voting panel. Sports analyst Kunle Sholaja has been reacting to this development, and here's what he's been saying. She never had the full backings of Nigerians who were eligible to vote. Of all the Nigerians that voted, it was only one Kokano that gave her his uh, maximum point, which is five. Others either should change her or try to undermine the possibility of her emergence uh, as the African Footballer of the Year in the, uh, in the women category. The only, the only person that could be excused is probably uh, Alaji Ahmed Yusuf, a member of the CAF Technical Committee, because he actually told me that he was disenfranchised, that he never got the voting form so even on, the, on December 1, 19, uh, 2019, the last day of the voting, he made frantic inquiry, he sent email, and they told him that they didn't capture his name among the voters. But when the result was released, his name came out, but it was blank. So we can excuse him. But for the others, I don't know what to say, whether they were willing tools eh, uh, to the politics going on in CAF whereby we know that the, the president of the Nigerian Football Federation, Amadou Pinik, is not in the good books of the president of CAF. Thanks for joining us on News Now on TV360 Nigeria. It's a wrap right now. Happy weekend.